In the past 15 years, I've created 145 repositories on GitHub, and I spent weeks pouring over every file to find my worst code and share it with you. Ask any software engineer, and they'll tell you about the bad code they've written. In fact, not just bad code, but cringeworthy code that will blind you if you look at it too long. I was most recently a staff engineer at Meta, and I promise you, every senior engineer has definitely written bad code in the past. But the best way to write good code is to write a lot of bad code. In this video, I'll share four examples of the horrible code I wrote and why it was problematic. Starting off in 2009, I took the intro programming class at Stanford. One of the assignments was to make Breakout, a popular game in the 1970s designed by the most famous pair of Steves in tech, where you have to destroy bricks by bouncing a ball into them. The first thing worth pointing out is that I was in the infancy of my engineering education, and I had no idea what version control was. So the best way I could think to save my work was to copy my code into a Word document and save that file into Dropbox. What? What the fu we'll focus on the code that constructs each brick, and particularly on the part where we set different attributes. The most glaring issue here is a violation of the dry principle, don't repeat yourself. The egregious repeated code is brick.setfilled true, which happens unconditionally, so we can easily pull it out of the if statement. We can do better by observing that imod10 is also repeated a lot. imod10 determines which row the brick is in, and we set the color based on that, so we can increase clarity by putting that logic in one place and using a switch statement. Finally, we can do even better. I'd argue that the method call brick.setColor in the break statement is also repeated. Luckily, starting in Java 14, we can use switch as an expression, which means it can return a value. The switch statement here is mapping the brick row to a color that we capture in a variable, and that lets us completely eliminate the repeated code. When we compare the before and after, we can see how much shorter and simpler the new code is. That was the intro programming class, so I probably got much better the next year, right? Nope, I still had a long way to go. The following year, I took the data structures class coding in C++. I'll share my implementation of the word ladder assignment. And the idea is that we identify the shortest path from one word to another by changing one letter at a time. For example, here's the word ladder from head to tail by following this chain of five words. Functionally, I was able to get my program to work, but my code was like my sense of fashion. It left something to be desired. The immediate red flag is that there are three layers of nested loops here. First is the while true loop to play each round of the game. Second is the loop to explore all partial word ladders. And finally is the for loop to generate more candidates. Some amount of complexity is unavoidable in this algorithm, but the readability can be dramatically improved if we properly decompose this. One quick improvement is that we can separate out the setup code to collect user input from the core logic to perform the algorithm into its own method. This allows us to delegate or hide all the complexity into the find word ladder method for better separation of concerns. Now I'll comment on a few of the mistakes I made in the find word ladder method. And in fact, commenting without thinking is the first mistake. For example, I declare a variable called initial ladder, and the comment is effectively saying the same thing. There are five other comments that I would argue are redundant, so we can easily delete them. This is already better. Here's a comment that does add value since it wouldn't be obvious in a vacuum what indicator means. The comment explains that it's used to tell if a word ladder has been found or not. The much better solution here, instead of adding a comment, is to embed the purpose of the variable in the name. So we could call this ladder found. And since it can only have two values, we can assign it a Boolean type. I love this because it makes the code both cleaner and easier to understand. I used to think more comments were better, but too many comments make the code harder to read. And even worse, they add to the maintenance burden when the code inevitably has to get updated. It's too much, it's too much. The next thing to improve would be the naming of methods. Methods are doing an action. So their name should contain a verb. Instead of possible stacks, generate possible stacks would be a better name. Even better would be to reduce the nesting and hide some of the complexity of the for loop into a method add additional ladders. I'd also be consistent that all methods start with a lowercase letter. Otherwise, it looks like a class name. The updates we made here might feel minor, but maintaining these standards is critical when you have hundreds or thousands of developers working on a code base. Examples of good or bad code are valuable, but more important is to understand the principles behind them. That's why my co-founder Alex and I have distilled two decades of experience and condensed it into a course to improve your code quality. The biggest reason I'm excited for this course is that Alex is truly one of the best people in the world to teach this topic. We worked together at Meta where he was a top 1% code reviewer across the whole company, reviewing a whopping 720 pull requests per half. He was also a top 5% code committer across the company, landing 270 changes each half, almost two per working day. Alex's secret to this level of productivity was simple. 
he became really good at writing high quality, almost perfect code. And this course will talk about how you can do similarly on your job. It's broken down into quick, easy to follow modules so you can jump around. And once you complete the course, you'll earn a certificate to show off on your profile. It's entirely free to get started. Check it out in the description below. Something that took me way too long to realize is that code is only one part of the job when you're a software engineer. Here's an example from 2016 for a personal project. It's a GitHub repository called Market. And what's striking about this is that there were 17 commits and I have literally no recollection of what I was trying to do. The commit messages are not helpful at all. I wrote things like more config, add PG, or fix debug. Let me contrast my poor example with a good commit. This commit has a really clear message and it even includes a screenshot that literally shows the impact of the change. In addition, the size of the code change is manageable and it passes the linting checks as part of the build system. Good commit hygiene is the sign of a strong programmer. It not only helps you, but also all your teammates who want to understand what you are doing. The final thing I want to mention is that sometimes it's okay to write bad code if you're making a deliberate trade-off. For example, in 2022, I quit my job to start Taro and I wanted to quickly validate the idea of a community for engineering career growth. So I wrote some pretty horrible code like hard coding certain database IDs because they wanted to get signal as quickly as possible. The quality and type of code you write will depend on the business need and those constraints will change depending on if you're in big tech or at a startup. In some ways, the takeaway from all four examples is the same. Focus on throughput. Once you accept the fact that your code isn't perfect and it never will be perfect, you start to improve much faster. Start writing bad code and if you do it enough, you'll end up writing good code. I get messages all the time from people who think that I've made it, and I don't actually feel that way, but now you can see how I got started. Anyone, anywhere can get to the level I am, or even better, and that is genuinely my hope for you. I wanted to leave you with three pieces of advice. First, be patient. My journey started in 2009, and I'm making this video 14 years later, and I'm still trying to learn and write better code every day. Next is to be open to feedback. If you're lucky enough to work with strong engineers, you should proactively ask them how you can improve. So much of my learning can be attributed to engineers who took the time out of their day to review my code and give me feedback. Finally, find community. Whether that's through Taro or some local dev group, it's so important that you find and engage with people who are also trying to get better. And speaking of people trying to get better, you'll love my video where I interviewed an engineer at every level of the career ladder, and you can see how their answers evolve. I'd love for you to share this video with a friend and also for you to hit that subscribe button if you found it useful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.